And now we've got Kevin Edberg, Executive Director of Cooperative Development Services. Thank you very much, Joel. As with the other members, it's a real privilege for me to be able to participate and, uh, uh, in this session and to see the number of ways that our organizations that are presenting here have all cooperated in the past and are telling a common story about uh, cooperatives and the opportunities that are created both through existing ones as well as uh, ones that we hope to uh, yet uh, uh, create. Next slide, please, Joel. So I'm privileged to work with a nonprofit organization um, uh, sharing here our vision and mission. And I particularly get jazzed about the, uh, uh, the vision for the work that we get to do in helping people create new cooperatives or uh, to expand existing ones. That vision that I think is particularly right and necessary uh, in this economic time, not just in our country, but around the world, that uh, people working cooperatively and responsibly can take ownership of their well-being um, and secure that well-being through organizations that they own and control. And I think that's a, a particularly uh, powerful vision for uh, certainly the folks that I work with, um, people in this country, and I believe around the world. We work with a number of uh, organizations, not just cooperatives, but uh, pretty much any kind of organization that um, uh, builds or contributes to uh, cooperative and sustainable development. But the vast majority of our, of our clients are indeed cooperatives. Next slide, please. We're a 25-year-old uh, nonprofit. We were originally created by uh, the Wisconsin Federation of Cooperatives, which is a trade association of co-ops. Um, and the experience that they were having at that time was that this trade association that does uh, uh, lobbying and member education were getting these requests from people who wanted to start co-ops. And they pretty quickly realized that the skill sets that you have on staff when you want to do that kind of work are not the same skill sets that you have on staff when you're going to do uh, lobbying and education. So they took the tin cup around the co-op community, uh, both in and outside of Wisconsin, and formed an organization um, in, in essence, the co-op community birthing uh, a new organization that would focus on this mission of starting new cooperatives. Uh, we worked originally in uh, uh, Justin, Wisconsin, then started working in uh, uh, Minnesota and Iowa, and that is where the um, bulk of our work continues to be done today, though we do work uh, uh, with clients all over the country. The majority of them are here in the upper Midwest. And we work in areas of agriculture, environmental stewardship, and community development. It's in the area of community development that our history of food co-ops has been. Um, can back up, please. Um, in the area of uh, community development that our work with food co-ops has been done. Uh, we spent, uh, in, for about 17 years, partnering with the independent consultants that today make up CDS Consulting Co-op, uh, providing an administrative structure inside of which they could grow their uh, uh, grow their team from one person in 1991 to uh, about 15 of them when uh, they formed, we helped them form the uh, their cooperative a couple of years ago. Uh, both the Seabill uh, programs and Cocoa Fist were uh, originally created by our partnership, and uh, I'm really proud of that. The um, later on, uh, my organization was one of those folks that helped create what was known then as Food Co-op 500. Today is Stewart's organization, Food Co-op Initiative. And uh, so we've been very active in helping think through what are the metrics and the requirements for helping an individual community start their own cooperative. And uh, we've been pleased to be a, a part of that, uh, uh, of that whole process. Uh, today our work uh, is focusing mostly on communities in our region that are wanting to start new cooperatives. Um, and uh, so I partner with uh, Stuart in that uh, in that initiative, and on occasion we get requests from existing cooperatives that uh, need some help with grant writing or finding other resources for their expansion projects or other issues that they're dealing with, and we are very pleased to be able to uh, maintain those relationships and partnerships with the uh, food co-op community. One last thing that I'll mention here, uh, inside of our environmental stewardship area is our work with in sustainable agriculture, and so we do an extensive amount of work with farmer-owned businesses and cooperatives that are providing natural, organic, and sustainable foods, basically forming the, uh, the, the, the supply chain for natural food cooperatives. So while we're working in those settings with farmers, 
uh, in many cases, we are developing the supply chain that becomes products available in natural food cooperatives. Next slide, please. I mentioned that we are a cooperative development center. Um, there are about 20 organizations around the country uh, that have been uh, 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 created in the last 25 years to do this work. Um, those 20 organizations affiliate inside of another organization called Cooperation Works. And that's uh, basically the national network of co-op development centers. Um, the website is there, and I'm going to show a map in just a moment. Why don't you go ahead. Uh, next slide. So that um, the, you can access information, regardless of what part of the country you're in, uh, you can go to the Cooperation Works website and learn about a center that is near you. Um, Many of them uh, will work with um, uh, consumer-owned cooperatives. Um, several are, work, are very intentional partners with Food Co-op Initiative and with CDSCC. And um, uh, many are also members of NCBA. So there's uh, a strong synergy there. And I guess my plug would be, while CDS, Cooperative Development Services, works primarily in the upper Midwest, uh, we have this whole network of other uh, nonprofit organizations that work in cooperative development and whose work is available to the people who are on this call uh, as uh, uh, potential sources of information, referral, um, information about grant programs, etc. cetera. Uh, next slide, please. And that concludes my little snippet about the, the development part of, uh, of uh, uh, co-ops uh, through uh, cooperative development centers. And now, now if you'll bear with us, I think we're going to run over maybe about five minutes. Indulge us here. So that leaves us about 10 minutes left for discussion with our panelists. Let's start with our first question. Why is it important that co-op leaders know how they are connected to other co-ops? Anyone can jump in here. Well, I'll start with that, Joel. I was just reading a newsletter from one of our food co-ops this morning, and, and a director was talking about um, having attended the recent CCMA conference. And she was uh, sharing in her story to her members how exciting it was for her to realize that her co-op was connected to a worldwide movement of co-ops. She hadn't really recognized that before. And I think, as Paul said earlier, co-ops really are a better way of doing business. But one of the ways that, that many of us who are working in our local co-ops um, on our local issues, are, are, it's really important for us to see that we're not alone in that work. It is important for us to, to work locally, but it's also really helpful, inspiring, um, and gives us hope when we realize that, that we're not alone, that there are other kinds of co-ops out there. I have, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. I was going to add that it seems to me that the, 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 the language around cooperative economy is a growing theme that is very exciting to many of us. Um, this idea that cooperatives doing business with other cooperatives, not just because they're the only game in town, but because we prefer to do that, and that in our, by using our business transactions, we strengthen um, uh, our counterparts who are also using the cooperative model. And that leverages the economic impact that we can have and strengthens the whole, uh, the resiliency of the whole cooperative network. And uh, it seems to me that if we're going to have cooperative economy, uh, we have to know who our potential partners are and how we can leverage that. Paul, that might even throw, uh, create an opportunity for some of the linking work that NCBA is doing. Right. Uh, well, you actually made the point I was making, but um, uh, we have a number of different opportunities for cooperatives to come together uh, for their mutual benefit. Uh, one is we have a uh, marketing committee that brings different types of cooperatives together to share best practices in marketing and how do you take advantage of your cooperative difference and 
and reach out to people who share similar values. So that's a that's a great opportunity for cooperatives to, to work together. Um, you know, we obviously do that in the legislative area where we're all stronger if we all work together. So if there's a cooperative uh, threat out there uh, in the public policy arena, by by rallying together, we can we can all benefit from that. Uh, and then just around the cooperative development, as Kevin mentioned, you know, there's there's I often say that cooperatives don't spring up out of the ground organically and we saw many examples about that today that people go out and organize them so to take a look with the other cooperatives in your community and see where are the needs and then bringing a cooperative solution uh, to those needs um, you know is what we're all about as a cooperative movement this is Chuck Gould I was just add the global perspective that the same reasons that cooperatives came together in 1895 to form the International Cooperative Alliance uh, those same reasons are relevant today, and part of that is the the uh, recognition that the stronger the movement is overall, the stronger the connections between cooperatives, the more the public sees that this is a way of doing business and not just an isolated uh, transactional approach in a in a given situation, but that it really is a different way of doing business. That strengthens individual cooperatives as well by strengthening the the understanding of the cooperative movement. It also strengthens the partnership between sectors that is so important, especially in, in the consumer sector where equity is particularly hard to come by because in some communities there just isn't a lot of assets to be invested. When we can partner with other cooperative organizations to, to get to uh, support these startup efforts, it makes so much difference. I don't really have a whole lot to add that hasn't been well, said, well stated already um, by my colleagues. I guess I just want to thank Paul for the plug for our, our new uh, brand, Stronger Together. But um, I will say that, that some of the most innovative solutions that we've found in our work to serve our member co-ops at NCGA have come from other cooperatives. Um, I could name co-op metrics. I could name LBMX. I mean, and it's been those, and that's just a couple out of a whole array. And so, um, you know, knowing knowing how to make your business better, sometimes the most creative ideas come from cooperatives. Well, great. Thank you all for your insights. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on our next question. Now, you all spoke to what you're doing now, but what in the next five to ten years, what do you think will be the most important role that co-ops will play and your organization specifically will play in supporting other co-ops? Let me start with that if I can. Oh, this, okay. is, uh, this is uh, Chuck, Chuck Gould, because I, I think it plays right into the question of the International Year of Cooperatives, which if it is simply a year, and on December 31st of 2012 it ends, and we say it was an event and a party, and we can uh, feel good about the conversation we had, but if it ends there, then we will have wasted the year. And my hope is that uh, 2012 is really the launch for a repositioning, if you will, of of the public awareness of, of cooperatives, the importance of cooperatives, the size and scale of cooperatives, the diversity, and how cooperatives are solutions to many of the problems that people are facing in the, in the world. So that requires that we use 2012 as the launch of public awareness and not at the, as the end of that. And our hope is that we can begin to introduce an image, if you will, of cooperatives in 2012 that we can then build on in subsequent years and just build consistently over time. And if I could please follow that with just a, a very domestic U.S. view is, is access to capital. And I know absolutely that, that all of the other folks on this panel would agree with me that we could do so much more, so much faster if we had better access to capital. So, you know, that is certainly in my, in my 10 range view of, of what we have to accomplish in working together as cooperative organizations and sectors. This, this is Paul Hazen. I'll just build on that. And, and as uh, uh, Robin knows, we've all been working on that issue of, of access to capital. And uh, we have a specific initiative um, that we're working on at NCBA is to create an equity fund for, uh, for cooperatives to provide a new source of equity. And, you know, my vision is that in, you know, five years, you know, that fund has, a, you know, 100 or $200 million in it that's available you know, to help uh, new co-ops get started and help existing co-ops uh, grow. And the other thing that we're going to be doing, and, and uh, Chuck laid this out from the ICA, is is really ensuring that the U.S. cooperative movement is, you know, 
very integrated into the global strategy of, of raising the awareness. I think we'll all benefit by working uh, not only among ourselves here in the U.S., but across borders and with cooperatives around the world. I'd like to jump in and, and share my thoughts on that. I think that we're, our, the current moment is uh, just so unprecedented in the amount of interest there is in, in cooperatives and food co-ops in particular. Uh, we haven't seen this kind of interest in food co-ops for 35 years, not, till, not since the 1970s. And it's, who knows how long it will be before this wave comes around again. And I think we're at a moment in time where it's, it, it, it's, we've, we really have to figure out how to take advantage of this opportunity, how to support people who are trying to do the work in their local communities to get a co-op started. A capital is certainly an important part of that. Accessing a talent is another part of that. Um, helping them shape their vision by sharing what we've been able to accomplish so far. Uh, there's just a, there's just such a need here. Uh, but I think in, in terms of capital formation, the more we are able to leverage our members' money, uh, the more we can provide capital for our co-ops. I think our members are looking for ways to, to put their money in to work for what they believe in and their values, and cooperatives certainly are a way to help them do that. I think I see uh, our role at CDS as being um, uh, innovating with the, with the startup model and bringing it to some new kinds of communities. Um, I, uh, I want us to continue working with natural food communities and, com uh, excuse me, natural food cooperatives in communities of all kinds. Um, but I also see an opportunity to bring this model to um, rural communities that are losing grocery stores and people driving 40 miles just to find basic food. Um, and I see my organization working with folks like Stuart to um, uh, try and uh, innovate with uh, our startup efforts. And I also see an opportunity to grow the base of support for Stuart's work um, in, uh, in and among the, uh, the other cooperative development centers. We've got five or six that are on board with us in a pretty regular way right now. Uh, I'd like to see that number 15 to 20. And um, so that's where my efforts are, are, uh, are being aimed. Speaking directly for our work at Food Co-op Initiative, I think one of the contributions we can make going forward is to learn from what we're doing and to provide better approaches for new co-ops to organize effectively and efficiently and, and uh, be able to get more of these stores up to a good start and uh, share those tools with other people so that it can be done across the country. And that, that's my goal. Did we hear from everyone? Excellent. Well, it's obvious there's a lot more discussion we could have on the topic of co-op connections, um, but our time for today is up. Once again, I'd like to extend a special thank you to all of our panelists. We were so excited and honored you could join us. Paul Hazen, NCBA, Charles Gould, ICA, Robin Schrader, NCGA, Stuart Reed, Food Co-op Initiative, Marilyn Scholl, CDS Consulting Co-op, and Kevin Edberg, Cooperative Development Services. On behalf of CDS Consulting Co-op, I'd like to extend my thanks to everyone for being with us today, and we always welcome your feedback. This recording and our entire library of resources will be available online as part of our CBuild library at cdsconsulting.coop, or just search online for CBuild Library. Thanks again for taking part in Co-op Connections, and have a great Co-op Month.